Hey everybody, welcome to Landscape Rescue. My name's Stuart Moore and today we're at Lowe's and it's a beautiful day and we're gonna do a shopping video. Oh, thank you Arthur, but I don't think many will give credence to such nonsense. Get the F off my yard! So I'm over here in the war zone, which is typically Lowe's displays. Look like they got hit by artillery. Take a look. Follow me to my favorite tree Well, I'm offering a steady hand I could be your security There's no guarantee on anything Like, I get it. It's hard displays are kind of a pain in the butt but it's almost a necessity to bring in retail traffic when you have that retail audience wrap a rope around this stuff guys geez louise so anyway i stood about three of them up and then i just gave up yeah well that's the trouble of this generation we were talking last week about edible stuff you know Bro, you got any uh, edibles on board? Some. The blueberries, the raspberries, the blackberries. It is so hard for me not to start a home orchard. It really is. I just don't have the room. I mean, some of these prices are, are pretty good. This is a seven gallon white flowering dogwood. It was laying down on the job for $58. That's a pretty good price. We talked about that last week, so I won't reiterate what a good price that is, but that's a good price. You literally just told us that. 58 for a seven gallon anything is typically pretty good. Somebody had mentioned in the Landscape Rescue Facebook group, we have a subscriber only Facebook group. Check the link below if you are interested and have Facebook and want to be in the group. It's pretty low key. There's about 600 people in there, but, or maybe it was in the comments. How can he not know? And he's probably a dummy. Someone was talking about in North Carolina or wherever she's at, they get anthracnose real bad. So dogwoods, the regular corn is Florida, will get anthracnose. Look into the Korean dogwood or the Chinese dogwood, Cornus kusa, a um, little bit more resistant to anthracnose and can handle a little bit more sun. I don't like to put them in anything crazy full sun wise. That seems to be what works the best. So Cornus kusa, the Chinese dogwood, is a dirty bloomer. It blooms on uh, when the leaves are already out, then it blooms. So leaves first, then blooms. So dirty bloom, right? Like a uh, Yoshino cherry would be a clean bloomer. A Cornus florida, a regular native dogwood, would be a clean bloom, right? Flowers first. Red buds, clean bloomer, flowers first, then leaves. Kusas and Kwanzaa cherries are what I like to refer to affectionately, by the way, as a dirty bloom. So it's got leaves mixed in with the flower. More of the later blooming trees are obviously like that. So if you're having problems with anthracnose, if there's a lot of disease when it comes to dogwoods in your area, try a Cornus Cusa. You could always get really crazy and drop some serious bones on a Stewardia. So look those up. It's not my favorite because of its name. I actually just love it. It has a camellia-like flower on it. Fantastic fall color, peeling bark, but it likes shade. I've got a 25 gallon at my nursery that I ordered as a kind of to relieve a little bit of pressure off the dogwoods. It's not gonna work. Nobody knows what they are. I would put it right up there with the fringe tree as far as refinement in class. I would put it right up there against the dogwood. Do already check those out. Also think about service berry. Service berry would be a good substitute for a dogwood because amazing fall color, white blooms. They're typically gonna be multiple trunk. If you wanna sacrifice one of your kidneys, you might be able to find one as a single stem. They are very expensive in that respect when they're single stem but relatively inexpensive if they're multiple trunk. So check out the service berry also is a really good one. So there we are, there's the rundown. I don't know why I didn't do that last week, but we did it this week, so that's all that matters. Here is a five gallon pink flowering dogwood. So this would be Cornus Florida. So that's telling us it's a native dogwood, rubra. So that's the defining characteristic there at the end. So Cornus Florida defines what we're looking at. The next name that comes after that is typically the variety rubra. 
red. So if you were looking for a Cherokee Chief or a Cherokee Brave, Cherokee Brave is going to be pink, Cherokee Chief is going to be a little darker pink, but still pink. It would be Cornus Florida, Cherokee Chief, Cornus Florida, Cherokee Brave, Cornus Florida, Cherokee Prince, right? Versus Cornus Cusa, uh, Milky Way, which is a variety of of Cusa. So for people that don't have issues with anthracnose, you, you could probably do this. And for $39.98, not that bad of a deal. Gives you plenty of room in the budget for some Dr. Earth, Tree Saver, whatever you're going to use as your inoculant, and then some two-year fertilizer tablets. I would definitely start now. Let's just say that. They're not super fast growing. I know we don't plant trees for us, we plant trees for the future generations. I, I like to see my the fruits of my labor. Speaking of fruits, I'm kind of getting, like I told you, I'm, I uh, ordered another apple tree or ordered a seven gallon Fuji. So I'm just kind of saving my money so I can buy that, I guess. No money and no prospects. But then I come here and I see a five gallon Red Delicious for $30.98. So $30.98 for a Red Delicious. In the ground, this is probably seven and a half feet tall for $30. It's not a bad deal at all by any stretch of the imagination. The thing with apple trees is sooner rather than later. So when it comes to apple trees, they don't produce fruit as fast as say a peach or a plum, probably even pears. And I'm just working through this in my head. I know peaches, shorter lived tree, bear fruit relatively early. Apples, longer lived tree, bears fruit later in life. I'm not too excited that I'm gonna get apples anytime soon. I have a pink lady. Now we're going to have a Fuji. I wish I just had more room. More room and more money. And I would definitely start my own home orchard. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! And graft a lot of things. I think that is super fun. I need to get into that. Do some bud grafting. Man, that would be awesome. Okay. What other tasty treats are here? We are definitely gonna need to keep our eyes out on the clearance for these raspberry and blackberries that they have here. And then there's some blueberries. That's gonna be important to kind of be mindful that when poinsettias start hitting or whatever new <laughs> seasonal thing happens, we can snatch some of these up. I think, I think that would be worth it. I have no idea where I'd put them. I really don't. Now that they've cut those trees out, I'm thinking about just doing an entire row of just blackberries and raspberries. Do we eat a lot of blackberries and raspberries? No. Are they delicious? Yes, maybe we'd eat more if we had more. They are pretty expensive at the store. And then maybe take a stab at some grapes. That would be fun. We eat plenty of grapes. Plus, I'm pretty sure I can make booze out of any of that. Gotta talk to Bree Arthur, find out how much of this fruit I can make booze out of. Do my head toss, check my nails. Baby, how you feeling? <laughs> She's such a smart lady, I guarantee she'll know. All right, you know what time it is. We're gonna dig around in the clearance dungeon for a second, see what they got. I have to admit, I cheated a little bit and I took a little peruse through here earlier and I saw some dianthus. Perennial dianthus, this is rockin' pink magic. So you can kind of see very delicate, a little bit more upright than say some of those other in a fatter leaf than say Fire Witch or Fire Star. A very reminiscent of those pinball wizard, but not as fat. So it's just a single petaled, which I think is okay. I think it's okay to mix those up and have the big showy ones and have the subdued um, nuanced uh, Dianthus also. So let's see, good to negative 10 to negative 20. So. It'll be okay in our zone. This is a zone five. At uh, 698, that takes us into that third tier, which makes this $4. But see, there's a, there's a sign. There's a sign right here that says 75% off distressed plant material. Well, that's a matter of perception. I'm assuming they mean if it's on the clearance rack. 75% off clearance rack. We, we hear that. We hear those words, and then I start thinking about these $30 clematis. So $30 clematis at 50% off, because these are normally $29.98, which would take us into that fifth tier, which would make these 50% off. So 
easy math for a silly, goofy hillbilly like myself, $15. Now I'm not in them for 10, but I remember seeing these earlier in the year and they're probably grown in pretty good, but I doubt all the way into a two gallon pot. So when I pull these out, they're probably gonna disintegrate on me. I have been trying very hard to get clematis to grow on the chain link on my neighbor's side with the hydrangeas. Well, I guess I can't say that because there's hydrangeas on both sides of my yard. Gorgeous. The neighbor with, not the little Chewbacca's, but the other one, the other lady. So I've been growing them on our fence and I have three. So I wonder if I can get kind of a good deal on these. So they have four of them, four of these clematis, and this is Barbara Jackman. I don't know who she is. And then just regular Jack. So we got a combination of the both of them, kind of a purple and then a purplish blue color. So if I can get a good enough deal on the clematis, I'll take the clematis and the dianthus. I have plenty of room in that little dedicated dianthus dedicated area that I have. It's not that I don't have a place to put them. It's the time. It's very difficult for me to train clematis on that side of the fence because I have those hydrangeas. I think once those tree hydrangeas, once I've moved those, which I'm having second thoughts about, but if I end up doing that, I'll have access to that, that fence a little bit. It'll be a little bit better. This is the tallest coleus I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I challenge, I challenge you to have a taller coleus than <laughs> What in the world? Check this thing out. <laughs> I feel like a bass fisherman. Look at this bad boy. Look at it. Hold it closer to the camera so it seems bigger. All right, so that's this largest coleus in the world. I found it. We did it. Landscape rescue changing lives. I figured out why that coleus is so big because it's in the center of about three flats that have been pushed together. So it's just reaching for light. I'm sure that's happened at other places, especially in commercial properties where you way over plant animals. I'm sure that's happened, but that thing is enormous. I almost want to take it home just for the novelty of it. All right, here is the clearance roundup. What I've gotten today was seven of these rockin' pink magic dianthus. I got these for $1.50. And the Clematis, I got another, I think about another $4 off by just walking up and talking to the manager. And I had never met this guy before. I prefaced it like this. Hey, I've got a YouTube channel where I go around and I shop for clearance plants. None of this is gonna be used on commercial properties. I'm just gonna put it at my house, but I'm gonna take all that you got. So is there anything extra you can do for me? He's a little bit more seasoned at this, right? And he's like, yeah, what are you thinking? I was like, well, I'd like to see it for two and I'd like the Dianthus for a dollar. That's, I feel like that's what I'm in them for. And he says, I'll do a dollar 50 on the Dianthus. I'll do five bucks on the, on the Clematis. I'm like, deal. I mean, <laughs> at that price, like who am I gonna fight? Who am I gonna argue and negotiate? You know, I let him know. I was like, man, anything extra you can do. I'm super thankful. That, that's like buy one, get one free. Now there was four, there was four of them. And I let a lady know that was walking around the, the clearance rack. I said, I mean, I'd get an opportunity to get clematis all the time. Why don't you take this one off my hands? The manager said he'd do them for $5. Three clematis for $5, seven of the dianthus for $1.50. Fantastic deal. Super excited. I can't wait to get home and plant some of this stuff after I spend five and a half hours editing this video. My name's Stuart Moore. This is Landscape Rescue. Thank you very much for letting me into your home to talk about plants.